House of Representatives remains without a speaker. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy failed to secure a majority after six rounds of votes. At least 20 far-right lawmakers blocked McCarthy's bid. I want to bring in former Republican Congressman Will Hurd of Texas and former Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York. Congressman, welcome. It's good to have you both. Uh, Congressman Hurd, let me start with you, because at this moment, after six rounds of voting, there is still no speaker. Is the door closing on Kevin McCarthy? I think it is. Unfortunately, these kinds of conversations have been going on for weeks since since the elections was over in November. Uh, nothing new has happened or transpired. Uh, the fact that Kevin has been willing to make all the concessions that he's had and this group of 20 have said have said no. Um, these these minority this minority group, right, this fringe group, um, uh, they just want to get a scalp. They just want to see Kevin McCarthy go down. Um, they're not, they, they talk about they're trying to fight for conservative principles. They're not, you know, what this is doing is it's allowing the Democrats to be giddy on the floor. And instead of us talking about what our agenda is, it's about how we can't govern. And so I, I don't know how Kevin um, gets out of this. And um, it's looking, it's looking difficult for him. Congressman Jones, uh, Republican Congressman Don Bacon spoke earlier with CBS News about potential negotiations with Democrats. Let's listen to some of that. But at some point, I believe Kevin and the team needs to reach out and see, okay, what, what areas of cooperation can we do with the Democrats? We don't want the, these 20 people to think they're the only door that we have to get out. We need to present another door that we can take and cut them out of this if need be. So realistically, what could Republicans offer that would actually satisfy Democrats? Well, let me be clear. Democrats have a history of working across the aisle. Even when we were in the majority, we did it with the bipartisan infrastructure bill. We did it with the Chips and Science Act. Uh, but, I, but I think with respect to choosing a speaker of the House, there is very little incentive for Democrats to help Republicans resolve their own dysfunction until such time uh, as they are satisfied that a Speaker of the House is going to be one who uh, is going to put the interests of the American people first. And I think what a lot of Democrats are saying that I've talked to is, why don't some moderate Republicans, people who still care about good governance, come over to the Democratic side and throw their support behind Hakeem Jeffries, who continues to be in, in ballot after ballot, the top, the highest vote getter by a significant margin uh, as part of some power sharing, sharing agreement. Hmm. Well, um, let's zoom out just a bit. Uh, Congressman Hurd, you wrote this about the Republican Party in a Washington Post op-ed almost two years ago. Quote, if the party wants a future, the elected officials, pundits and activists who claim to be its members must stop peddling conspiracy theories and drive out those who continue to do so. So fast forward to today, and all but two of the Republicans opposing Kevin McCarthy have raised doubts about the validity of our elections. Mm -hmm. Are those concern that, concerns that you raised back in 2021 now coming to fruition? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the problem that we're dealing with right now with, with the speaker vote, um, the seeds were sowed many years ago. And I think those those 20 uh, members apparently must have been on vacation uh, during the last election because the takeaway from the midterm elections in November 2022 was that the, the country wants serious people to solve serious challenges. Now, we have a lot of problems that we're going to have to address around the horizon, uh, inflation, uh, dealing with China, uh, border security, uh, cyber terrorism. This is going to require real collaboration and work. And, and right now, this is, if we can't even coalesce around who the Speaker of the House should be, how are we going to address those things? And again, this plays in the hand. I know President Biden is, is super happy right now uh, because this, this helps him um, over the next two years, this kind of dysfunction and this inability uh, to coalesce and work on the problems uh, that the country needs us to work on. Hey, Congressman Hurd, I wonder if uh, for those 20 Republicans who are opposing Kevin McCarthy for speaker, is there a political consequence or are they carrying out essentially what they believe their constituents want? 
Well, I, I think they're they're carrying out what they believe their constituents want. But th here's one of the problem: these are from these are people that represent ruby red districts. You know, whoever wins the primary uh, wins the general election, uh, and this is one of the reasons we need more people participating in primaries. Um, so that we can get folks that are willing to come to Washington D.C. and solve problems and 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 work together to to address these issues, not just throw bombs. Uh, these are people that are bomb throwers, and, and all, the only thing bomb throwers know how to do is is throw bombs. And, and so so that's the the core issue um, at play here. Congressman Jones, you mentioned Hakeem Jeffries. So the incoming Democratic Conference Chair Pete, Peter Aguilar said this while nominating Jeffries for Speaker. Let's watch. Make no mistake, there is no frustration on our side. We are focused on serving the American people. In order to do that, we have to unite behind a speaker. And Democrats are united behind a speaker who prioritizes. So are Democrats really as united as they say they are? They are. I mean, I think you see that in ballot after ballot. Hakeem Jeffries getting unanimous support from Democrats in Congress and let me just say, people really do feel on the Democratic side that this is a question of democracy itself, that these are existential questions. Kevin McCarthy voted against certifying that free and fair presidential election from 2020. Just hours after nearly dying alongside us at the Capitol, it is really difficult for someone of good conscience in the House of Representatives to feel comfortable voting for him after that. He has also enabled the most extreme elements of his party, people who have threatened and incited violence, even against their own colleagues. Uh, and so the idea that Democrats would cross the aisle to empower Kevin McCarthy in particular uh, is something that is, is unrealistic, I think, in this environment where they could just allow Republicans to continue to show themselves to be incompetent uh, on a national stage when it comes to actually uh, exercising the reins of government. All right, well, Will Hurd and Mondaire Jones, thank you both for joining me. Appreciate it.